Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's episode 7. Today we're going to do electrical wiring for the search and rescue utility boat. Now before we do anything else, my plan is not going to work out the way that I intended. It turns out some of the components that I bought were bigger than I expected them to be and there isn't really room for them so I'm having to like figure some stuff out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. The plan originally was for my switches to be located right here. This is normally where I'm going to sit. Here's the cockpit. This is the compartment that I had created for electrical wiring. There will be a hatch that sits here eventually when all of this is decked. But my original vision was for all of my switches to be located on this panel right here. You basically drill a hole for the switch plate, stick it through, wires would be here. I could have everything run in here nice and neat and still be able to access it to make any corrections or anything like that. Here's my conduit that runs to my primary battery at the front of the boat. We are not gonna be able to do what I wanted to do because the area that I have here, it's not big enough for the switch that I bought. But an area that is big enough is this area right here. That is gonna create one complication and that's that every time I wanna access the switches, I'm gonna to have to open this hatch, but I'm not really so upset about that. The second complication that it presents is that I don't want my wiring to go through this panel out into here and then back around. So the way we're going to deal with this is by building a mount for the switch out of a small plastic container. And in this way, it's kind of like when you wire your house. Right? Breaker box needs to be placed before all of the wiring and all that other good stuff can happen. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, where to get started? Let's take a look at the components that we have handy. One of the things you're going to have to think about for sure is exactly like what rating each one of your circuits is going to have. For my purposes, none of the circuits that I'm going to run are going to be rated for over 7 amps. As a matter of fact, that's probably overkill for all of them. I don't expect to have more of a draw than 3 to 5 amps on any one of the circuits that I've got. We're going to go with 14 gauge wire to connect my fuse box to my switch box. Marine grade heat shrink. We have a plastic Sterilite container. We have the fuse box itself. And we have our switches, which are going to mount into this box right here. I'm going to have to cut a hole in this box so that this switch plate can mount down into it. And if you're going to do something similar to this, it's important that you get something that has this flange on the outside, this edge, because this is going to be what I use to secure this to the paneling inside of the boat. So we're going to get our measurements on the back of the switch plate figure out exactly how big the hole has to be here without making it too big. Then we're gonna cut that and we're gonna drill holes for our wires. We'll call it two inches by eight inches. That'll work and it'll make sure that we have enough room for using screws to secure this to the front of the plate. You wanna be careful with this because this can be pretty brittle and you don't wanna break it. Just gently work it. Score it first. No, 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 no. So much for that. There, fine. We'll do it on wood, which may not be that bad an idea. You see, by making this out of wood, kind of alleviate the issue that I was running into before to put this back in the cockpit, which completely changes everything that I was planning on doing. Great. I can now, because I've got this extra area, take this and mount it here. I have access to all my switches like I originally wanted to have. I can drill a pretty good sized pass-through port. Yeah, and that'll allow for my wires to freely go back and forth to the panel that I want. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. I need to get this out of the way though. Where's my drill? Drill! Where'd you go? I found you. I'm very happy about this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start pre-wiring. This is 
the lead that's going to be coming from our accessory battery. This is going to get split out into a negative, which is going to go to this negative bus. And then the positive is going to come here to this 50 amp waterproof circuit breaker. Waterproof circuit breaker is in turn going to feed the hot for this distribution board. That hot, when it comes in, then feeds all of these individual fuses. Those fuses go to our switch. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and start from the side. You may be wondering how it is that I learned how to do this stuff. Does he do this for a living? Is this just a hobby? What's the deal? I learned this stuff from the army. I did a job where they had to teach me about things like basic electronics. And it's a thing that I still carry with me to this day. This is eight gauge pair coming from the battery. Again, the intent is never to go beyond 50 amps. So I consulted the applicable chart for that kind of voltage and current is going to be. And this is what the chart told me. Got a little solder here. Just melt down in there. Oh, this big spider. Oh, there. Right there. Can I see? I understand. They scare me. Now what we have to do is connect this one to the hot lead here. For this, we can use the spare piece of the eight gauge that we just took off. Negative leads to here. The black wire for all my circuits is gonna come back directly to this bus. These hots are gonna be what actually supplies my switch. The distance between the switch and the fuse bus is gonna be static. So all we're doing here is making all of these a uniform length just to get the job done. I'm just gonna use crimp connectors because this is basic stuff. Now you may be thinking, well, why is the wire that he's using over here this 14 gauge, why is that so thin when the wire that he had coming into this bus is, is, is so big? This bus is technically capable of supporting hundreds of amps of current. Now, for safety reasons, you know, again, I'm never going to draw that much. So I want to cut off everything coming out of the battery at 50 amps total. So this breaker will stop this block and in turn every other device that's out here from drawing any more than 50 amps off of that accessory battery. 50 amps requires bigger wire. But each one of these fuses, three amps, three amps, five, 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 seven, I've already mapped all these out for the services they're gonna provide. 14 gauge wire is plenty. Now, if we wanted to get crazy with it, we could go ahead and solder these connections too. But that cramp, if it's done correctly, is more than enough for what we need. And then it's just a matter of turning it back on. So all these are on, the next thing to do is put on the connectors that are gonna go on this end, which are gonna be over here. All these are already mapped out. So these are five wire switches, right? And that can be a little bit intimidating. It's pretty easy. The top is just a ground. And you can see that I've allowed for the daisy chain to continue to be on here. Like when I first purchased this, I'll post a picture of what it looked like. The positives were also daisy chain, which is great if you know your raw connection to your battery came into this and everything that was on here was riding off of that one circuit, that would be fine. But that's not what I'm doing. That I had these fused inputs, so I had to disconnect all that stuff and I had to make use of each one of these. So now what I'm gonna do is I've already pre-positioned these slide-on connectors. I'm gonna start putting each of these onto each one of these circuits. All of these are now connected, now they need to be labeled and bundled. Why do we need to label them? Because each one of these has a particular current that I want it to have. For example, the bilge pump. When you look at your bilge pump on the bottom, it'll tell you uh, how much current that pump will draw. It says three amps. So, we've got a three amp fuse in line. I need that line to be marked as my bilge pump so that when I go to connect it to the switch, I know which pump switch to connect it to. 
first wire. I'm gonna label this as bilge pump. The next one is my navigation lights. The next one is deck lights, fish finder. Now maybe overkill, but in cases where I did not know what the current draw was gonna be, for example, on the LED lights, I went ahead and went with a five amp fuse. Now this whole row over here, with the exception of this one, these are just spares for whatever I would use in here. Cabin lights, transom light, and we have a USB charger, which I forgot to put a connector on. Okay, well, my camera cut off while I was in the middle of doing stuff. But here's what we came up with. We have our primary feed coming up out of the conduit. Hot goes to the 50 amp circuit breaker. 50 amp circuit breaker feeds the fuse bus. Now each one of the lines for circuits that I know I intend to use is coming out of the fuse bus. It is all being bundled together. It's being fed out here to where the switch is going to reside. Now all of those wires are labeled and are hanging out waiting for me to install the switch. Now, before we can even check to see if any of that stuff is working, we need battery connectivity, which means we have to come here to the front. We have our lead, which will feed through the preordained hole. We will then cut this, and put leads on it to connect to the accessory battery right here. Sign. Let's run some checks with the multimeter. First check, this is the leg that's come in. This is providing the 12 volts into the 50 amp breaker. You should always have 12 volts here. It helps when you turn on your multimeter. He is an idiot. We have purposely trained him wrong as a joke. What do we have? 12.57, that's great. Now if I come down here, I should have nothing. I don't have anything. Close the breaker. 12.57, so this is now providing juice to every single one of these fuses, right? So every single one of these fuses should be hot. 12.57, 12.57, and we are good, 12.57. Which means we should also have hots here. So any one of these leads that I touch 12.57, cool. Open that breaker. Make sure everything is cold. Yep, dead. Cool, so now we can connect these leads to our switch and we can start adding the circuits that we wanna run. We should at least get lights on the switch if everything is set up right. Bilge. For these, we're going to the Battery hot, which is the center pin. Bilge pump goes here. Close the breaker. Oh, look at that. Oh, somebody's got electricity. Doing the bolt dance, feeling the flow, working, working it. Oh, it's working, it's working, it's working. That's enough. Go ahead and come back up to the battery panel. You can see that I've now attached the battery for the motor. I've got my leads in for the battery charger that is coming out here, leading into my conduit. Traces all the way back down to here. And this, this feels like it's a smart thing to do. I'm still not 100% sure. I wanted to be able to quickly connect the power leads for the motor and I also wanted my on-off switch to be located here. So here we have the battery kill. Um, this is in the on position. You see it's green. And any other position, that's in the off. And all that really does is provide current to these lugs. So when I go to put the motor back on, all I have to do is connect to these leads in the same way that I would connect to the battery. It's just an extension with a cutoff of the battery itself. Now there've been a lot of distractions today. 
but I've gotten a lot done and I feel good about that. But before I turn in for the night, I want to show you how easy it is to add a device when you set up your switching in this way. It's literally run your wire, clip the ends, connect to your switch, connect to the device. That's it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So down here is where the bilge pump is going to sit. And you can see I've already got my wires run. Those are coming up. They're zip tied to my framework, right? All the way through. And I've got my lead split so that my negative is coming in this direction. And my positive is right here. Now before doing anything, I make sure that my circuit breaker is popped. Because I do not want to be messing with this while voltage is applied. I need to cut this off to be about the same length as the other wires. Do Feed it on. Crimp it. Check your connection. That's solid. That goes on to the switch lead. Remember, this is coming from the battery. So when I enable the switch, that allows power to travel down this wire to whatever it is that we're trying to power. My negative lead is going to come back over here and it's going to touch the same ground bus that everything else touches. Cut this to be sufficient length and we're not going to bundle anything in until later. I don't know if you noticed me doing this before but there's a little hack, right? If you put your screw in, it makes it way easier. It turns your connector into like a little holder. All right, so we now have switched power, but I haven't connected the bilge pump yet. So let's do that. So here are my two leads, right? These are gonna need to be stripped. Let me go ahead and lop off these wires. You never wanna go too close to the body of the device because you always want some slack in case you ever have to redo it. Now we need our solder seal connectors. Now these solder seal connectors have written right on them what the gauge is. So this is 22 to 18. Does that look right? And yep. And all you gotta do is line it up so that your wire sits inside of that solder on the inside. Do the same thing from here. So they cross underneath that solder point. And all you gotta do is just apply a little bit of heat and when that solder melts, you know you're good to go. Keep it moving. You don't want to burn anything. There it goes. These are marine grade connections. So that is watertight. Let me just do it again for the negative. Okay. That bilge pump is now good to go. I like to have a little bit of extra wiring here. You never know when you're gonna have to do service. And a little bit of slack can go a long way. That's good enough for now. We'll come back and look at it later. But that hose runs up to the outlet here. It's been all sealed up. Ready to go. Which says build a pump. And it's working. Nice. Just finished adding in the nav light. Oh, looky there. Let's keep going. So these are the LED lights that I'm gonna be using throughout the boat. There's gonna be a total of 10 of them for each one of the compartments. I'm leaving my switched output and the first place that I'm going is here. And you're gonna see everywhere that I intend to put a light, I've got a little loop here. This is gonna follow along. This traces up through here. We've got a loop here. We get another loop here. We have a loop here. We have a loop here. We have a loop in this compartment. This compartment. This compartment. There will be a loop in this compartment. See? Now there's a loop. And all of it ends with this light right here. I'm about to, goddamn cricket. I'm about to check and see if this light works. Moment of truth. <laughs> Look at that. And that's gonna mount right up here. That makes me very happy. Work backwards from here. I'm assuming there was a fade to black, significant pause to denote passage of time. It's the next day. I ran into some trouble when I got to the phase where I was trying to wire the lights for inside of the storage compartment. Initially, I thought for some reason I was going to have to wire 
these, my LED bars, in series. So that's exactly what I went to do. And I learned very quickly that you can't do that. You have to wire these in parallel. These have built-in resistors. If you don't actually have the full 12 volts, the LED will not turn on. And because it won't turn on, it acts like a gate. It stops you from being able to make any subsequent 12 volt LEDs light up if they're wired in a series circuit. So I spent a significant amount of time on it. And I got to the point where I'm happy to say the storage compartment lights are working. Let's see how they look. Bang. That's the lighting. You know what? I need to get a better effect on this. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn those lights off. That looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Now, one of the things that's really cracking me up about this is I didn't realize that these were effectively black lights. Look at that. My rod socks over there. And then the belts to hold down the fuel tank. That's really something else. I had no idea. Right, that's enough of a crazy light show. Open our circuit breaker so we don't have voltage running through the entire system. So now I figure it's a good idea to go ahead and show you what I'm going to do. It's essentially the same circuit. All I'm doing is wiring up exactly the same LEDs for the deck portion. These are the lights that you're going to be able to see once all the decking is in. Let me show you how I've got it set up. Now, this is pretty simple. We're going to start with the last one in the sequence, right? And all it is is red to red and black to black. But we are going to use solder seal connectors and a little bit of heat shrink to try to make sure that this connection stays serviceable for as long as possible. We've got probably 20 or 22 gauge wire coming off the LEDs themselves and then we're working with I think 18 gauge wire here. Start by stripping off a little bit of the end of this, doesn't have to be a lot, about a quarter of an inch. Alright, hopefully we got a good connection there. One of the ways that we can test it, to be sure, is we grab our end wires. I'll just strip a little bit off these and go touch them to the battery. Any 12 volt power supply should do and if they light up. And we know we've got good connectivity. All right, looks like that's working. Now that we know that one is good, we can continue our parallel wiring. Now, the technique that I like to, to use here is I will cut my primary wire to exactly the same length as the lead wire coming off of the light. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make a Y, right? So the main leg is gonna continue forward and this leg is gonna go right to the LED. So to keep it neat, all we do is cut it flush because when we go to strip these wires back, these two are gonna share one side of the solder seal connector. And that's actually what makes it parallel is that the 12 volts, because of that Y, continues all the way through. Those get fed through together. These two get fed through together. And it doesn't matter which side you share on. The reason that I choose to go with this side is because that's the direction the wire is facing. It's just a neater, tidier way to do things. Once again, red to red, black to black, all the red share, all the black share. Make sure your solder band is lined up on all three chunks of wire. And shrink it up. Good stuff. And now when I go to pull this towards the next light, you see how much easier it is to conceal this when all the wires are pointing in the same direction? That's what we're going for. Now I've got, let's see, that's two down. Seven more to go, I think. We'll check these out when I'm done. Time to see how we did and do a rundown before we call it quits for the night. Circuit breaker is now closed. I've got that one LED in there. I took out a fuse just to give myself a visual reminder <laughs> that current is being applied. Check it out. We got bilge. We have nav lights. We have the stern light. Okay, uh -huh. Storage lights. Now we need to see if the new addition is working. This is gonna be the deck lights. There they are. Pointed downward, tucked away. 
I like this one a lot. All the way up here towards the front. That's gonna be pretty cool. Let's shut the lights off so we can see. There we go. Let's take it down to just the deck light. That's a lot more mellow. That's gonna be perfect. My garage is like a German discotheque. Yeah, hello. Are you here for the fishing? I love it when you catch the fish. The only thing really left to wire is the fish finder. Um, and that's gonna be using the conduit. Gonna be mounting the fish finder up towards the front since that's where I anticipate I'm gonna be doing most of my fishing. So that means the last thing we have left to do is to go ahead and pour that foam, which we will do tomorrow. All right, so I had just enough foam to get me to about, I don't know, seven eighths of the way, which is good. And then I topped off the rest with a combination of green foam board and closed cell grade stuff. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a good thing, but it's what we got. So it's what we're doing. All right, the foam is all cured now and it's been leveled out and all that other good stuff. And it's all just in time to have received the stuff I need for the fish finder. So the power cord that comes in for Lowrance is relatively short. So all it's got to do is just be extended and we happen to have the wire to do that right here. So that's what we are going to do. And as far as the transducer cable, it's this big honking thing, which factory wise comes in plenty long enough to go the full length of a 14 foot boat. All we're gonna do is shove these down the conduit and get it hooked up to our switch. Should be ready to rock. Again, nothing special here, just solder seal connectors. Woo woo! Okay. And all we're gonna do here is use a handy dandy piece of PEX tubing and some tape. And we're gonna shove this on up in there like it's a doctor appointment after your 45th birthday. How you doing? You got a cigarette? There we go. Hey, we are. Let's go hook up the fish finder, find out what it has to say. Now, what we're running with is a Lowrance Hook 7TS. This is exactly the model that I use on my kayak. Um, I'm gonna use it for both applications. There's no reason that this fish finder can't jump back and forth between boats, especially if I set it up on a kayak rail. So let's go ahead and give this juice. I might end up mounting it like right here, but I don't know where the trolling motor is gonna go exactly. So we gotta figure that stuff out. But for now, let's see if we have power. <laughs> Victory. We'll make sure the circuit breaker kills it. Folks, that was the last bit of wiring that I think we needed to do on this boat. Pretty cool. Well, friends and family, as much as I would love to just keep going and going and going, the video's gotta end at some point. I think we're probably already close to the 30 minute mark, which is a cinematic masterpiece for somebody with my skill. Um, I, hmm. I, I corrected myself a number of times in here. I, for, for whatever reason, I was thinking I was using 14 gauge wire. I don't know why. I know what 14 gauge wire is. 14 gauge wire is what you use to wire your house. I kept calling it 14 gauge wire. That's embarrassing. The other thing is that I uh, put a circuit breaker on my motor battery as well. So one of the things I was thinking about, let me show you. Over here on these lugs, like it would be super easy for something to go ahead and you know, cross these leads. Go ahead and make sure that's in the off position. You're in here messing around with a tool or something like that, and boop, boop, boop. I didn't want to take any chances on damage or fire or anything like that. So, guess what I did? I installed a second 50 amp breaker up here, specifically for the motor battery. So with all that said, I continue to be like super pleased with the way that this is progressing. I'm gonna go clean up some odds and ends in this video on a high note, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode when we talk about decking. Make sure to like and subscribe. I promise I won't let you down. We'll see you in the next one.